Hi, my name is Bill Kinney, and this is the fifth video in my series about multivariable calculus using the computer program that you see here called Mathematica. It's also the fifth part of a sub-series on calculations with parametric curves. This video is going to be harder than the first four videos. You're definitely going to want to have a piece of paper, a pencil or pen, and a calculator handy to pause the video and try to understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to do some tricky things pretty quickly here. What we're going to do is we're going to parametrize an ellipse. Now an ellipse is an oval shape. Usually ellipses are centered at the origin. That's the simplest kind of ellipse at least. But our ellipse is not going to be centered at the origin. Also usually when you parametrize such an ellipse, you parametrize it with a clock, counterclockwise orientation. We are going to do a clockwise orientation. Also, you usually start at the right vertex. Vertices of the ellipse are where the um, ellipse crosses what you might call its axes of symmetry. Usually you start at the one on the right. We are going to start at a different one. Okay, our vertex, our ellipse is going to have axes of symmetry which will be horizontal and vertical. We're not going to worry about trying to rotate the ellipse, but um, other things are going to be more complicated than usual. I'm also going to show you how to use a command called contour plot in Mathematica as a new Mathematica command. So here's our example. We want to parameterize an ellipse. First of all, let me focus on the fact that this ellipse is going to be centered at the point 3, 4. If you draw an oval, 3, 4 is going to be at the center of the ellipse. This oval will be more elongated in the horizontal direction than it is in the vertical direction. The semi-major axis is actually a number, not an axis. In this case, it's 5. That's representing the distance between the center of the ellipse and the vertex that's furthest away, or the two vertices that are furthest away. That's going to be a horizontal orientation in this case. And the semi-minor axis is a number, in this case b equals 2, that represents the distance between the center of the ellipse and the vertices that are closer. That will be a vertical orientation in this example, though notice in this exercise down here that you should do afterwards that I switched around the role of vertical and horizontal. All right, so you might try to draw such an ellipse if you understood what I meant there. I'm going to draw it with Mathematica here in a second. I do want to show you that we're also parametrizing the ellipse in a certain way. We're starting at the 3, 2, which is actually the, the, the lowest point on this, this ellipse, when t equals 10. And we're going to go back to where we start, not after 2 pi units of time, but after 10 units of time. First of all, we want to write down the equation of the ellipse. The equation, the xy equation, let me phrase it that way. The xy equation of this ellipse is... How can we construct it here? Well, hopefully you recall that for ellipses centered at the origin, typically the form of the equation is written like this. Now, if the semi-major axis is horizontally oriented, you would want to call this A, and indeed A would be bigger than B. That's going to be the case for us. And in fact, you can replace A and B with the numbers that we have here, 5 and 2. But this ellipse, like I said, is centered at the origin. We don't want it to be centered at the origin. We want it to be centered at the point 3, 4. So what you need to do, and I hope this is pretty clear, is you need to replace the x with an x minus 3 and the y with a y minus 4. Geometrically, what that's going to do is that's going to shift the center of the ellipse from the origin to this point 3, 4. We can take a look at this ellipse with a command called contour plot. <clears throat> contour plot can plot any kind of equation relating x and y together, whether y has been solved for as a function of x or not. I'm not going to bother trying to solve <clears throat> for y as one of two possible functions of x here. I'm just going to type the equation in, in as is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Though when you do use contour plot in this way, one quirk about Mathematica here is with the syntax is that you need to put two equal signs. I'll emphasize that. That's important. Put two equal signs there. Let's plot this where x goes between negative 10 and 10 and y also goes between negative 10 and 10. And let's make add some style here. Not plot style in this case, but contour style instead. Let's make it thick and blue. Here's a graph that we get. Contour plot by default puts its graphs inside frames, which is what you see here, this box. I like to get rid of the frame, so I'm going to add an option, frame arrow false. I also like to add axes, axes arrow true, and let's label the axes. Axes label arrow in quotes x and y, 
and we'll make those bigger so we can see them better. Here we go, there's a more ideal picture to me. I'm going to give this plot a name, I'm going to call it ellipse. I'm going to put the word ellipse here, put an equal sign, hit enter, and actually I can even put a semicolon here to suppress the output. Now what I've done by doing that is that plot is actually stored in this variable called ellipse, and if I now type ellipse and hit enter, shift return, I actually see the plot again. That's a nice trick, uh, especially when you when you want to use the show command, as I do want to, to, to use here. All right, let's get to parameterization now. So there's our ellipse. We want to parameterize, starting at the point 3, 2, which is at the bottom of the ellipse. We're going to need some trig functions, I hope you realize here, um, because you're going to have oscillations in the x and the y directions. I also did an example where I, I parameterized the circle and I used trig functions. That's what you do want to use here. x is centered at 3, so its trig function should have a shift of 3 in it. So I should start with a 3 in its equation. I'm not going to specify whether I use a plus or minus next but I will specify that the amplitude in the x direction, so to speak, is 5, is a, is the semi-major axis. It's the distance horizontally from the center to either vertex on the left or the right. The amplitude is 5, so I'm going to have a 3 plus or minus 5. I might want to use a cosine, I might want to use a sine, so initially I'll write this as cosine slash sine, but I will change it eventually just to a cosine or a sine as well as I'll change this eventually either to a plus or a minus. You can do what I'm about to do here as long as you start at one of the vertices in this situation. What is this b? b is the coefficient of t in the cosine or the sine, and I hope you remember that it's going to be 2 pi divided by the period of the motion, and the period of the motion here is 10. We're getting back to where we started when t equals 10. 2 pi divided by 10 is the same as pi over 5, so this is going to be pi over 5 that goes there. The equation for g of t is going to be similar. y will equal g of t. Think vertically now. Uh, the center in the vertical direction is at, uh, where is it here? At 4. So instead of a 3 here, I'll have a 4. I'm still going to have a plus or a minus. The amplitude in the vertical direction is the b. That is 2. I'm still either going to have a cosine or a sine of pi over 5 times t now. Now we need to pick which ones of these here. So again, we're starting at the point 3, 2 at the bottom here, and we're going clockwise. In other words, y is starting at its minimum value, and x is starting at its middle or average value. If you think about that, that means for x we need to use a sine, and for the y we need to use a cosine. Moreover, since y is starting at its minimum value, I want to use a minus sign here. y is starting at its minimum value and is going to go up initially. x is starting at its average value, but it initially goes down since we're going cl uh, clockwise here. In order to make this function initially decrease, I need a minus sign here as well. This should be a parameterization for this ellipse. Now we check it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show the ellipse with a parametric plot of these functions. I'm ultimately also going to put this inside a manipulate, which will make an animation. So I'm putting a manipulate around this. Let me type the functions over here as well. f of t is 3 minus 5 sine. In Mathematica, the s must be capitalized, and remember function arguments are in square brackets. There's f of t. g of t is 4 minus 2. Cosine is also capitalized. I can do the c of t thing as well as I've done in my videos. This will be handy later on to do, and so I want to make a habit of doing it. I'll put the c of t here. t goes from 0 to b. And let's make this be red. And we'll put it, by doing it in the show here with the ellipse, we're going to put one on the top of the other, hopefully. I do see a little bit of red there. That looks good. Look closely here. 
here we go, I'm going to play it clockwise motion starting at the point 32, ending at the point 32 when t is back to up to 10. So this looks like we've done what we set out to do. Look again what we set out to do. And now I'm going to go down to your exercise. In your exercise solution I added a little bit more to my graph. Here is the exercise. Write that down, work on it. Down here is my solution. If you're back from pausing the video, the xy equation is this one. We can put that into a contour plot. Ultimately, the parameterization as t goes from 0 to 20 is given by these equations. That's this one parameterization. You can actually come up with other ones, but this is the simplest. And here's the animation. Notice that I added some things to this picture, like some I used list plot to plot some dots, one at the center and one at the location of the object as it moves. And I'll let you look at the code again here too. And that'll be the end of this video.